Well, Thomas Jefferson said, without health, there can be no happiness. But what if we could improve the health and happiness of millions of people around the world who are afflicted with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease or benign and malignant tumors of the brain and breast and liver and prostate or arthritis or depression? It sounds like science fiction, Star Wars, but it's not. That potential truly exists today. And it's something called focused ultrasound, which is an early stage, revolutionary, non-invasive therapeutic technology that truly holds the promise to transform the treatment of a whole variety of serious medical disorders. An example, this is a young woman with a gigantic uterine fibroid, a benign tumor of the wall of her uterus that was compromising not only her work life, but her marital life. She was offered the standard of care, which is a hysterectomy, a big operation, five to seven days in the hospital, four to six weeks to recover, no more uterus, no more children. Instead, she chose focused ultrasound, which was a several hour outpatient procedure, home the same day, she was back to work in two days. And this is her nine months later, after the tumor, which had been killed by the focused ultrasound, had been absorbed by her body. This is an isotope scan from an 80-year-old almond farmer who had metastatic melanoma to his ischial tuberosity, his sit bone. He was unable to ride his horse around his farm to sit on his tractor to ride in a car due to excruciating pain. He was treated with radiation therapy. It failed. He was treated with focused ultrasound. He was pain-free the next day, and he's been able to be back in the saddle for several years now. And this is a six-year-old girl who had excruciating abdominal pain from this enormous benign tumor filling her pelvis, which was compressing her bladder and her ureters and her kidneys, causing kidney failure. She was taken to surgery, but the surgeons had to back out because the tumor was too bloody. As a last hope, she was sent to the focused ultrasound people. In a three-hour procedure, more than half of the tumor was obliterated, enough to decompress her bladder and ureters and kidney. Her renal failure resolved. She's been pain-free. As she grows up, she can be treated again and again. So the way focused ultrasound works is analogous to using a magnifying glass to focus beams of light and burn a hole in a leaf. But with focused ultrasound, instead of focusing beams of light, multiple intersecting beams of ultrasound energy are focused on a point deep in the body. And at the point where all those beams converge, at that focal point, there are a variety of interesting and important biological effects on the tissue. Now, unlike radiation therapy, for instance, which only works through one mechanism, focused ultrasound today has 18 mechanisms that we know about, including ablating tissue, killing tissue, delivering drugs in extremely high concentrations, precisely to the point in the body where they're needed, and minimizing all the systemic side effects, and markedly enhancing or augmenting the effectiveness of cancer immunotherapy drugs. The fact that there are so many different effects creates the possibility to treat a whole variety of serious medical disorders. Today, there are 58 medical disorders which are in various stages of development. As you can see from this, most are very, very early stage. In fact, only three today have been approved by the FDA and are available for treating patients in the US. Clearly, there's an enormous amount of work left to be done. With advances in technology, we can imagine an alternative future for patients with metastatic cancer. Instead of it being a death sentence, it becomes a chronic, manageable disorder. 
or patients with a malignant brain tumor, glioblastoma, extending their life expectancy from one to five or perhaps even 10 or more years. Now, <laughs> you don't believe me. It sounds too good to be true. It sounds like snake oil. It's good for whatever ails you. But focused ultrasound is not a panacea. It doesn't treat every disorder, spinal deformities or leukemia or traumatic injuries. And it's not good for every patient with every disorder. The problem is that the evolution of a new therapeutic medical device from laboratory research to widespread patient treatment is a glacial process, often taking decades. And every day that goes by where a technology like focused ultrasound is not available translates into unnecessary death and disability and suffering for countless people. And the problem is that there are a whole series of obstacles, lack of awareness amongst all the stakeholders in the ecosystem, the FDA, commercial insurance reimbursement, turf wars amongst the physicians. What if there was a way to shave years off of the time it takes for focused ultrasound to become state-of-the-art, standard of care? Think of how many hundreds of thousands of lives could be improved. So nine years ago, we started the Focused Ultrasound Foundation as an organization to accelerate the development of Focused Ultrasound. It engages in a variety of activities, including providing resources, funding for research, fostering collaboration and stimulating innovation, and overcoming barriers. One of the most problematic barriers is lack of awareness of what's been called medicine's best kept secret amongst all of the stakeholders. What if we had a way to tell the focused ultrasound story and inform all of the stakeholders in this ecosystem in one fell swoop? What if? Well, we have the good fortune to have on the board of directors of the Focused Ultrasound Foundation, the world's most prominent storyteller, the rogue lawyer. Thank you. Um, you may be wondering what a uh, reformed small town lawyer slash um, suspense writer has to offer to a conversation about the latest developments in complicated medical devices. Um, and that's a real good question. Uh, not much. Uh, I've been on the board for six years. I still don't understand the technology. And I'm not supposed to. Uh, that's not my job. I'm supposed to raise awareness. I'm going to leave the science to Dr. Cassell and the researchers. Uh, Neil has been my personal brain surgeon for the past 10 years. <laughs> and um, fortunately, I have not needed him in that capacity. <laughs> but I keep him on a retainer. <laughs> he works cheap. Uh, a few bottles of fine Italian wine each year, and he's hooked. Uh, <laughs> He, uh, from time to time, wants to go in and poke around, uh, but we haven't had that much wine, have we, Neil? We've never, <laughs> no, never done that. Not enough. A few, years, a few years ago, Neil started talking nonstop about focused ultrasound surgery slash therapy. We didn't know what it was, and we were uh, pretty suspicious. Most of us suspected it was another investing scheme. I learned uh, the hard way a long time ago to avoid doctors when they're rounding up investors for their latest opportunities. Uh, but Neil was not looking for money. Neil was chasing a dream. He was and is um, very persuasive and persistent. One of the great advantages of living here in this community is there's a real spirit of volunteerism. If something is broke, we think we can fix it. Uh, believe it or not, y'all, 20 years ago, uh, there was a plan to tear down the Paramount. And the community said, no. We found some good leaders, raised a bunch of money, and here it is. We've enjoyed it for 20 years.
if there's a need here, sooner or later, someone's going to start a nonprofit and address it. We have so many nonprofits, we even have a nonprofit that does nothing but advise and consult with other nonprofits, right? <laughs> My point is, if you're so inclined, you can do a lot of good work uh, with a lot of good people. Uh, I have found nothing so far, no cause, issue, campaign, project with the potential of touching as many lives as focused ultrasound. Not just touching, but improving and saving. The technology is revolutionary. The challenge is, is getting there. Uh, I joined the board six years ago, and Neil quickly told me, because of, I knew nothing about medicine, uh, my job was to raise money and raise awareness. And I, I don't really like to ask folks for money because I've learned that it normally doesn't take very long for them to return the favor. Um, but I do know that I have an audience, and I do know that I can uh, tell a story. So I've written a book. This is my latest book. It's called The Tumor, kind of a knockoff or tongue-in-cheek of my other books. It's not a legal thriller. It's, it's the story of focused ultrasound, the story that needed to be told. It's free. There's one in your bag, okay? Uh, but it tells this remarkable story. I, I'm, I'm lucky enough to be able to uh, work in a world of fiction, and I still enjoy it uh, immensely. This is not fiction. This is the future, and it is rapidly approaching. Thank you, John. This is a home video of a young woman who's essentially disabled by the abnormal movements of Parkinson's disease. She can't even walk without assistance. What could focused ultrasound do for this woman? That video was me just 10 weeks ago. Look at me now. My life before my focused ultrasound procedure was completely different. I went on vacation with my husband. We went out sightseeing. We were trying to walk back to the hotel. I couldn't walk any longer because my foot was cramping. It was cramping so bad I couldn't put any pressure on it at all. We looked at each other and we were like, we can either laugh or we can cry. We decided to laugh. He actually had to give me a piggyback ride back to the hotel. I had fun, but I'm not so sure he did. <laughs> I babysit my grandson, and I was having trouble picking him up and holding him and dressing him. Whoever designed those onesies with those teeny tiny little snaps on them, they'd never thought about anybody with Parkinson's, that's for sure. Bike riding has always been my passion. No matter how bad of a day I was having, I could get on my bike, go for a ride, it would bring a big smile to my face and a sense of independence. But I couldn't ride my bike anymore because I'd lost my balance. I couldn't ride. The only bike I could ride was a stationary bike, which is not near as much fun. Recently at a wedding, my dad came up and asked me to dance with him. And I couldn't. I couldn't get up out of the chair. My back and foot were cramping so bad that I couldn't stand up. I couldn't have that dance with my dad. It's every little girl's dream to have that dance with her dad, and I couldn't do it. These are all the catalysts that helped me make my decision to have my focused ultrasound treatment. The morning of the procedure, I had to be off meds, which meant I couldn't walk. I had to be taken to the hospital in a wheelchair. The procedure lasted approximately four hours. I had to have my head shaved, which is why I'm sporting this new hairdo. <laughs> I will say short hair is very easy to take care of, and I get ready in about half the time now. <laughs> so that's a good thing. I had to have a frame attached to my head. When they attach the frame, it feels like a vice just clamping down on your head. They tighten it and tighten it. You get, feel a lot of pressure on your head. 
The frame attaches you to the MRI table so that you can't move. I had 14 treatments or sonications, or what I like to call zaps. With each zap, you feel intense heat, but no real pain. It felt like heat was escaping out of my head for about two days. After each treatment, you are pulled from the tube for neurological testing. I'll never forget my last treatment. Dr. Fishman came up to me and said, if you stay where you are now, would you consider the procedure a success? I said, yes, absolutely. He said, that's it, we're done, we're done. Words I couldn't wait to hear, I couldn't wait to get up off that table. The nurses were bringing a, a bed for me to take me to my room, and the clinical trial director looked at me and said, no, get up, you can walk. And I thought to myself, she's right, I can walk. I know I could walk. With each treatment, I could feel how I was getting stronger and stronger, and how my pain and symptoms were getting less and less. I knew I could get up off that table and walk to my room, so I did. I got up off the table, and I walked to my room. It was purely a miracle. I arrived at the hospital in a wheelchair, unable to walk, and immediately, immediately following the procedure, I can walk to my room. It's amazing. In the 10 weeks since my procedure, I have run, run a 5K for Parkinson's. <laughs> yep. Very, very happy to say that. I've been on many, many bike rides. I've walked downtown with my husband. I've taken my grandson to the park and actually been able to play with him on the playground. And yes, I've had that dance with my dad. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. You should know that the extraordinary courage that Kimberly showed, she was the first patient in the U.S. to have this treatment, paved the way for others. Sooner or later, everyone in this room is going to be a diagnosed with a serious medical disorder, or members of your family, or your friends. And you're going to wish that focused ultrasound was available. Help make it happen. Go out and tell the story. <laughs>